Take Your Life Back. Today shows with me, Ralph Friedrichs. I just want to welcome each and every one on this beautiful Monday morning. Well, it's not really beautiful. It's raining outside. I decided today to do a radio show compared to my usual video show. And what we're going to talk about today is substance abuse. Uh, some facts that are out there. But first, as always, I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez. You can find him at 844-414-8444. He's also on www.startingpointmn.com. That's S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com. And the M-N stands for Minnesota, folks. Again, today we're going to talk about substance abuse. Uh, I'm going to um, pretty much touch on a lot of different uh, uh, facts that are out there, so uh, bear with me, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoy and you learn something from these facts. People, <clears throat> excuse me, people abuse substances such as alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs for varied and complicated reasons, but it is clear that our society pays significant costs for these things. The toll for this abuse can be seen in our hospitals, our emergency departments both through direct damage to health by substance abuse and its link to physical trauma. Jails and prisons tally daily and strong connections between crime and drug dependence and abuse. Although use of some of these drugs, such as cocaine, has defined in recent years, use of other drugs, such as heroin, have increased dramatically. Finding Effective treatment for prevention of the substance abuse and substance dependence, now both included under the diagnosis of substance use to disorder, have been very, very difficult. Through research, we now have a better understanding of behavior. Studies have made it very clear that drug education and prevention aimed at children and adolescents offer the best chance to curb drug abuse nationally. In 2013, National Household Survey on Drug Abuse estimated more than 13% of adults in the United States have used illicit drugs in the past year alone. Other statistics in the survey included 24% of Americans over 18 years of age have engaged in binge drinking in the past year. And more than 20,000 of Americans have smoked cigarettes in the past month. Other research reveals that facts like 25 million people over the age of 18 in the United States have had some form of substance and use disorder in the past year alone. A, a few substances produce some form of intoxication that alters judgment, perception, attention, or physical control. Many substances can bring withdrawal effects caused by sensations or reduction in the amount of substance used. Withdrawal symptoms can range from mild anxiety to seizures and hallucinations. Drug overdose may also cause death. Nearly all drugs of abuse can also produce a phenomenon known as tolerance, in which one must use a larger amount of drug to produce the same level of intoxication. Commonly abused drugs include the following inhalants. This group of substances include solvents that emit vapors causing intoxication when breathed and inhaled. Individuals who abuse inhalants intentionally breathe in the vapors either directly from a container, from a bag, in which such substances is in, or from a rag soaked with the substances and then placed over a mouth or a nose. Inhale intox intoxication can uh, happens quickly and doesn't last long. Abuse of inhalants is also called puffing. Approximately 58% of inhaling users report first using it by the end of ninth grade, folks. Teens who started using inhalants before 15 years of age were up to six times more likely as those who started later to develop the dependence on those uh, on these substances. Symptoms of inhaling intoxication are very similar to those in intoxication with alcohol, including dizziness, clumsiness, slurred speech, elation, tiredness, slow reflexes, thinking and moving, shaking, blurred vision, stupor or coma, and or weaknesses. 
It can also result in chemical and temperature burns as well as withdrawal symptoms, chronic mental illness, and even sudden death. Long-term damage associated with inhalant use includes brain and nerve damage as well as heart, liver, or kidney failure. Tobacco, that is another one. People cite many reasons for using tobacco, including pleasure, food performance, and vigilance, the relief of depression, curbing hunger, and weight control. The primary addictive substance in cigarettes is called nicotine, but cigarette smoke contains thousands of other chemicals that also damage health, both to the smoker and those around them. Hazards include heart disease, lung cancer, emphysema, septic ulcer, stroke, withdrawal symptoms of smoking include anxiety, hunger, sleep disturbances, and depression. Smoking is responsible for nearly half a million deaths each year. Tobacco use costs in the nation an estimated hundred billion a year, mainly in direct and indirect health care costs. Alcohol. Although many people have a drink as a pick-me-up, alcohol is actually depresses the brain. Alcohol lessens your ambitions, slurs speech, and decreases muscle control and coordination. And the prolonged use may lead to alcoholism. Withdrawal from alcohol can cause anxiety, irregular heartbeat, tre tremor, seizures, hallucinations. And its se severous form, withdrawal combined with malnutrition can lead to a life-threatening condition called delirium, tremens, otherwise known as DTs. Alcohol abuse is most common cause of liver failure in the U.S. The drug can cause heart enlargement and cancer of the esophagus, pancreas, and stomach. In addition to its direct health effects, official, officials associate alcohol abuse with nearly half of all fatal motor vehicle accidents. In 1992, the total economic force of alcohol abuse was an estimated of a tremendous amount of $150 billion. Other commonly abused um, drugs are marijuana, also known as grass, pot, wheat, herb. Marijuana, which comes from the plant cannabis sativa, is the most commonly used illegal drug in the United States. The active ingredient in the plant Delta 9 tetracannabinol is associated with intoxication. Marijuana resin called hashish contains an even higher concentration of THC. The drug is usually smoked, but it can also be eaten. Its smoke irritates your lungs more than that. Uh, more and contains more cancer causing chemicals than tobacco smoke. Common effects of marijuana use include pleasure, relaxation, impaired coordination, and memory uh, lapse. Often, the first illegal drug people use, marijuana is associated with increase of progressing to the use of more powerful and dangerous drugs such as cocaine and heroin. The risk for progressing to cocaine use is 140 times higher if you have smoked marijuana at least once in your lifetime. Synthetic man-made forms of marijuana often called K2, Spice, Black Mamba, Blaze, Red X can be smoked or otherwise inhaled. It is an increasing health risk in that it can produce the same impairment in judgment, addiction, and an inability to function as marijuana and go undetected by conventional drug testing. Some preparations of synthetic marijuana are much more potent than traditional marijuana, leading to a higher occurrence of becoming delirious, having seizures, or even stroke. Cocaine, also known as crack, coke, snow, blow, and rock. In 2012, an estimated of 1.8 million people over 12 years of age have abused cocaine. Unbelievable. Derived from the coca plant in of South Africa, uh, South America, cocaine can be smoked, injected, snorted, or even swallowed. The intensity and duration of the drug's effect depend on how you take it. Desired effects include pleasure and increased alertness. Short-term effects include paranoia, constriction of blood vessels leading to the heart damage or stroke, irregular heartbeat, and death. Severe depression and reduced energy often accompany withdrawal. Both short and long-term use of cocaine have been associated with, with 
damage to the heart, the brain, lung, and kidneys. Another one is called heroin, also known as dope, smack, force. A 2012 National Household Survey drug abuse indicated that an average age when Americans have used a drug for the first time is about 21 years of age, including 116,000 who reported using it for the first time in a year prior to the time this survey was taken. Effects of heroin intoxication include drowsiness, pleasure, slowed breathing, withdrawal, can be intense and can include vomiting, abnormal cramps, diarrhea, confusion, aches, and sweating. Overdose may result in decreased breathing to the point of stop breathing and death. Because heroin is usually injected often with dirty needles, use of the drug can trigger other health complications, including destruction of your heart valve, tetanus, botulism, and infections like HIV and AIDS or hepatitis. Another one is meth, also known as meth crank ice speed crystal. Use of this drug also has increased, especially in the West. Meth is a powerful stimulant that increases alertness, decreases appetite, and gives a sensation of pleasure. The drug can be injected, snorted, smoked, or even eaten. It shares many of the same toxic effects as cocaine, heart attacks, dangerously high blood pressure, and stroke. Withdrawal or often causes depression, abdominal cramps, and increased appetite. Other long-term effects include paranoia, hallucinations, weight loss, destruction of teeth, and heart damage. Anabolic steroids. This group of drugs includes testosterone, which is the natural male hormone. It also includes a number of other synthetic forms of testosterone. Steroids are often abused by bodybuilders or other athletes to increase their muscle mass or improve the more performance. These types of substances seem to be associated with a number of mental health effects like dependence on substance, mood problems, developing other kinds of drugs, uh, or drug abuse. Club drugs. The club scene and rave parties have po uh, popularized an assortment of other drugs. Many young people believe these drugs are harmless, so, or even some believe that they're healthy. The following are the most popular drugs uh, used, uh, quote, as uh, 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 pub or club uh, drugs. Ecstasy, also called MDAM or Magdama, E, X, E pills, Adam STP. This is a stimulant hallucinant used to improve mood and maintain energy. Often for all night dance parties or get togethers. Even one time use can cause high fevers to the point of inducing a seizure. Long term use may cause damage to the brain's inability to regulate sleep, pain, memory, and emotions. I should have said ability to regulate sleep, pain, memory, and emotions. GHB, also called liquid XT. C, G, Blue, Nitro. Once sold as health foods in health food stores, GHB's effects are related to dose. Effects range from mild relaxations to coma or even death. GHB is often used as a date rape drug because it is tasteless, colorless, and acts as a powerful sedative. Rofenol, also called Rufi's Roche. This is another sedative that has been used as a date rape Drug. Effects include low blood pressure, dizziness, abnormal cramps, confusion, and impaired memory. Ketamine, also called Special K, this is an anesthetic that can be taken orally or injected. Ketamine can impair memory. High doses can cause, cause amnesia, paranoia, hallucinations, depression, difficult breathing. LSD, also called acid. Microdot and mushrooms, also called shrooms, magic mushrooms, or payer buttons. Popular in the 1960s, LSD has been revived in the club scene. LSD and hallucinogenic mushrooms can cause hallucinations, numbness, nausea, and increased heart rate. Long-term effects include unwanted flashbacks, psychosis, hallucinations, delusions, paranoia, and mood disturbance. 
PCP, also known as Angel Dust, Hog, Lovey, Love Boat. PCP is a powerful anesthetic used to uh, in veterinary medicine. It affects similar to those in ketamine, but even stronger. The anesthetic effects are so strong that they can break your arm, but you cannot even feel any pain when under these effects. Usually tobacco and marijuana cigarettes are dipped into PCB uh, and then smoked. Use and abuse of substances such as cigarettes, alcohol, and illegal drugs may begin in childhood or in teen years. Certain risk factors may increase someone's likelihood of abusing substance abuse. Risk factors like family history. Family history factors that influence a child's early development have been shown in related or, or to be related to an increased risk of drug use, such as chaotic home environment or I should say, chaotic, ineffective parenting, lack of nurturing, and parental attachment, parental drug use or addiction. I'm right, folks, it comes down to what I talk about, which is the role model. you got to remember, folks, kids look at you as their hero. You're the role model. So if you do these things that I'm reading in front of your children, expect I repeat, expect them to do these things. They have the mentality of monkey see, monkey do. They look at you as their hero, so if they see you doing these drugs or drinking the alcohol, they will do in return. Become a role model. Let today, November 18th, be the first day that you start changing. Other risk factors for substance abuse are related to the substance abuse sufferer or him or himself, herself, like male gender, childhood attention deficit, hyperactivity or disorder, otherwise known as ADHD, history of anxiety or other mood disorders, conduct disorder or antisocial personality disorder. Factors related to child and socialization outside the family may also increase the risk of drug abuse, including inappropriately aggressive or shy behavior in the classroom, poor social coping skills, poor performance uh, enhancements or performance in, in general, association with deviant peer group or isolating oneself from peer uh, altogether, perception of, perception of approval or drug use. These are all signs, folks. These signs have to be, and I repeat, have to be paid attention to. But I always tell everyone, and I'm going to say it today, although we're not on video, the message is still the same. The message here is we all have a book of life. My book of life started 53 years ago, and I'm on chapter 53 at this point. What chapter are you on? When did your book of life start? And of course, all of us do not know when our book of life will end. Only God knows that. But wouldn't it be great if you, as the parent, grandparent, or a legal guardian, help your children write their chapters in their book of life? It is your responsibility to help write them from the age of zero to at least the age of 18. You should be a participant in 18 chapters in their book of life. You should be the co-author in their book of life. It is you that sets the moral standards in within your own home. It is you by not drinking, not smoking, not using profanity or physical violence that show your children that these are the proper things to do. But if you do smoke, you do drink, you do use physical violence or profanity in front of your children, you are condoning and recommending to your children that it is okay to do these things and you are setting the stage in your children's lives to go out into society where they will uh, do exactly what they saw at home. But folks, if you include, include respect in your home, love in your home, compassion and emotion in your home, these are the things that your children will take into society for the rest of their life. It is your responsibility to be the co-author in their book of life, in the first 18 chapters, it is also your responsibility to author your own book of life, to write each and every chapter. 
if you're like me, whose chapters uh, were less than desirable before I hit rock bottom and I uh, seeked help for my addiction and seeked help from God, it is never too late while you are alive to change. Let today, November 18th, 2014, be your first day for the rest of your new life. Let me help you take your life back. Together, we can fight, and we can fight together in this war of addiction. But it all starts with you, and it all starts today. If you are infected with the disease of either alcohol or drug addiction, there are signs of hope, and, China, uh, and there are changes coming ahead. But changes start with you, and your changes have to, and I say it have to start with two things. The first and most important thing is for you to stop denying that you have a problem. If you know that you have an alcohol problem and a drug problem, and believe you me, we all do know the difference is, is knowing and admitting. But if you know you have a problem, let today be the time for you to finally say to yourself, I know I have a problem. And folks, the other part of this equation is, is you have to reach out to God. God has to be part of your life each and every day with or without an addiction, but more so if you have an addiction and more so if you need help. You wouldn't be in this predicament if your life was so good. If your life didn't crumble around you, you probably would not even be listening to this uh, uh, audio tape right now. But because your life might be in a situation that you're seeking help from somewhere, someone, seek it from God. Reach up to God and say, God, I cannot run my life alone, and I need you to help, guide, and direct me. It is that simple, folks. And once you have done that, once you have admitted that you have a problem, once you have reached out to God, there are different channels for you to go to, different avenues. You can try AA, which has this 12-step program. They will guide and direct you each and every day. Another thing is to reach out to me at 844-405-HELP. I can teach you to do it in my own special way. I can show you how I, each and every day, for over a year and almost a half now, have recovered with my own methods. My methods include audio tapes, videotapes, websites, live interviews, chatting, emailing. My methods consist of six, possibly seven hours daily of thinking, talking, or doing alcohol and or drug addiction recovery. That uh, is how my method works, and it does work for me. You can also check into a treatment center. They have the 30, 60, 90 day programs. Check into one. But folks, no matter what method you decide to take, whether it's mine, AA, treatment center, or any other method, when you are finished with uh, going through, uh, and, and, and I'm saying this on a daily basis, weekly basis, yearly basis, when you're finished with the class, the meeting, the treatment center, never ever go back to your old ways and continuously reaching out to God for guidance and direction. Reaching out to God is not a one-time thing. It is a everyday thing, just like fighting your addiction is. It is 24 hours a day. You need to continue doing that. And while you're doing that, it is very much recommended by me to continuously helping others that are going through recovery. To also make friends with people in recovery. You need to let the sunshine into your heart and into your home, and you will get nothing but positive results. You need to stay away from the negative people. There are going to be people that have been watching you maybe for the last few or a couple of years that have noticed your drug and alcohol addiction that now are telling you you're no good, you're worth nothing. Folks, I'm here to tell you, you are a special person, you are good the way you are, but you have a disease and you need help and you can reach out to other people for help, you can reach out to God for help, but do not, and I say do not, listen to the people that tell you you're no good and you're worth nothing. Because you are. 
you were created by God as a human, a good human. What you have is a disease, and what you need to do is to learn how to live with this disease. And the ways to do that is to reach out to social networks, uh, to organizations, to your pastor, to your father, uh, to God, more importantly. But it has to start, and it has to start now, and it has to continuously uh, 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 work in your own home as a role model. You need to lead by example. You need to show that your, uh, to your family that by not smoking, drinking, using profanity, or physical abuse, that you are a good role model and your children will follow. And if you're a victim listening right now to physical abuse, you need to call 911. It is better to have the police come to your home and have your loved one taken out in handcuffs and hopefully getting some help on the outside and one day coming back to you a new person than for 911 to be called to come into your home to put you in the body bag and take you out because that, folks, is irreversible. Folks, tonight before you go to bed, when you take your shoes, sneakers, or slippers off, don't just put them by the edge of your bed, put them under your bed, folks. That way tomorrow morning when you wake up, you need to go on your knees to retrieve those shoes, sneakers, or slippers. And while you're on your knees, do me this favor. Reach up to God and thank Him for another day on this beautiful earth. For me, you have to remember this, folks. For every breath you take, there is someone on this earth taking their last breath. For every time you blink your eye, there is someone closing their eyes for the last time. While you're alive, while you listen to this message, while you will watch TV, while you can still go to AA, now is the time for change. For some of these people that took their last breath, that closed their eyes for the last time, they might have never had the opportunity for change. Do not put, tell me that uh, maybe tomorrow I'll change, Ralph, because there might not be tomorrow. I spoke to a friend of mine uh, up in Alaska, his name is Brandon uh, Weipa, and uh, he, uh, we spoke, he's a juvenile uh, officer, a uh, correction officer, and we spoke about the young people in the United States, especially in Alaska, uh, that go through his uh, uh, facility, and how a lot of it has to do with what goes on in their own home, and how they ended up in front of him. And he, like me, both know that there will not be a tomorrow guaranteed. And you need to realize that. It has to be today. Today is the day for change, folks. Don't wait for another audio by me or video tomorrow because you might not be here to, to, to hear it or to see it. I might not be here tomorrow to do it. Let us all come together today. November 18, 2014, and start with a whole new change. Let us all fight this, this war on drugs. People will use substances such as alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs for varied and complicated reasons, but it is clear that our society pays a huge cost. The toll for the abuse can be seen in our hospital and emergency departments, both through direct damage to health where substance abuse and its linked to physical trauma, folks. The jails, the prisons, tally daily the strongest connections between crime and drug dependence and alcohol dependence. Folks, we need to all start fighting together, and why not join me in the fight? I guarantee each and every one of you folks that are listening either have an issue on your own or you know someone in your life, a loved one, a family member, a friend, a co-worker. But without you educating other people and reaching out and helping, and without me continuously doing what I do, things will never, ever change in the United States or in the global community. Reach out to me at 844-405-HELP and let me help take your life back. I am here today to tell you I want to help each and every one because when I help you, I help me. Let today be the first day of your new life. And let me help you take your life back. Folk, folks, it was such a pleasure talking to each and every one of you. And I hope and I pray 
that you listen very clearly that today is the day of hope. There might never ever be a tomorrow for you or for me. So let today be the day of change. Let the sunshine into your heart and your home and reap the benefits of positive results. Stay away from the negativity. Stay away from the people that tell you no good and you will find your life will change. And reach out to God and ask Him for guidance and direction. And folks, you will see changes coming your way. Changes like physical changes, financial changes, spiritual changes. They are all coming and they're coming to help you starting today if you reach out to God. So let today be the first day for the rest of your life. And like I always say, folks, a sober today, I guarantee you, will give you a better tomorrow. May God bless you. And more importantly, may God bless all of us. And may God bless the United States. Have a sober day. Will they know and never understand? 